Now, there's a piece in this morning's papers about the Bikini Bridge. If you're the right decree of thin and you lie on your back, your hip bones will jut out and there'll be a gap between them and your bikini bottoms. It will, it said, replace last year's gauge for the perfectly skinny body, the thigh gap. And as it's January and the whole world seems to be on a diet... What impact are these kind of images going to have on the rest of us and the way we see ourselves and think other people see us? And how does our idea of ourselves, fat or thin, acceptable or not, influence our chances in life? Well, Fatima Parker and Catherine Trudeski have both become campaigners, arguing that no one should be bullied because they're fat. Catherine, what sort of bullying did you suffer because of your size? Um, I think it's pretty much endemic. I mean, I was very lucky being um, a larger child. I was quite active. I decided I wanted to be a ballerina quite early on, and so I had sort of physical abilities. I um, was involved in sports. I don't think I was bullied as badly as some other fat children um, in my class, but my bullying was more to do with my family. My mother was um, a standard size 12 all her life and didn't quite understand why I wasn't, and she took it as a personal failure. So um, th that's something that really concerns me, is not so much overt bullying, although that is an awful thing to have happen. But when it's in your own home um, and it is towards the child, it is quite difficult to be able to retain a sense of self. I'm not sure so, so if she was a standard size 12, what did you grow to be? I a think standard I was a size, size what? I was a size 12 and I was about 10, I think. And so when I was 11, I was bigger than she was. So that's how it began as soon as I hit my secondary school. And she tied it into all kinds of other factors, like getting interested in boys and all kinds of things. You know, she, she sort of tied it into things that were not remotely to do with, with um, anything. I was just a large person. So was my brother. We're both of a similar size. And Fatima, what about you? What sort of bullying did you suffer? Uh, I suffered bullying um, from age 10. I was an orphan in boarding school and I was uh, just a little bit bigger than the other uh, children and I was bullied and called fat all the time and put in with the children who were uh, uh, who had diabetes or other diseases just for to lose weight. So that has been the, 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 the stigma that uh, like a scar that one lives with. And what would happen when you were put on diets? Did you uh, lose, lose a little weight bit of weight? Not? Yes. Uh, and then I was active and I wasn't that big and was, I was eating healthy, but because I was a lot bigger than the other uh, children and uh, the fashion at that time was uh, the stars were very slim. I mean, I come from like French culture. Uh, so if you didn't look like the film star, the movie star at the time, you were considered uh, ugly. Uh, that was painful. So what I did was to concentrate mainly on studying because I knew I was doing the right thing, but my body wasn't changing. And what about now? What happens now? Because you're, you're still a very big woman. I am. Yes. I mean, this is, this is the lesson. This is the lesson. The, all the bullying and all the hard times and all the harm and pain that I received when I was 10 didn't help me at all. You know, they've put me on diet since age 10 and now I am, you know, 17, 18 stone. So it means that the solutions that have been sold uh, 50 years ago and that are still being pushed now do not work. So f it didn't help, you know. And what about you, Catherine? How do you deal with it now? Um... I find myself, I've come through it reasonably unscathed, to be honest with you. I think it's just a level of bloody-mindedness that I was actually born with. I, I didn't ever really buy into it or believe it. There were periods in my teenage years when I felt really bad about myself, and I certainly, certainly impaired my decision-making process. And this is what concerns me. This is one of the reasons why I campaign now, is because body image and how you see yourself does affect your decisions and how you decide, particularly in your relationship choices. You tend to, I think, I think there's too many children, as far as I'm concerned, are throwing themselves away. But um, I totally concur with what Fatima said in that shaming fatter people, shaming larger people or larger children is absolutely pointless. And it just leads to a kind of syndrome where, where, the, where a child will feel bad about themselves and it doesn't help. But, but, you know, we do have to acknowledge that there are serious worries about health. Only this week we had the midwives saying how difficult the impact of obese women getting pregnant is for their work. And we know there's a link between obesity and breast cancer, pancreatic, uterine, other cancers, diabetes, heart disease. How much do you worry about your health? Um, not as much as everybody else seems to. Um, I don't 
totally agree with the facts and figures that are being thrown out. Mm-hmm. Um, there is something totally. called an, ob- yeah, an obesity industry who rely on us believing these statistics yes. to continue getting these treatments and continue taking the drugs and getting on the diets and uh, buying the low-fat but food. But the cancer evidence is there and very clear. It's a certain point, but you have to... I mean, it's always it's an American phrase, follow the money. Yes. Who pays for this research and why are they paying for it and what are they producing and why? I mean, that's one part of it. I can't sit here and say that there's absolutely no links in this. You know, we're totally... Whatever, but people, people have come in different shapes and sizes for many generations now. We always do, and it's not always the larger people who are sick. Yeah, Thin uh, people get these, these complications too. It's not yeah. just all about fat people. The, the stress as well of stigma and, and fat shame and fat hate causes as well these diseases and these cancers. And then fat women, because they feel ashamed to go and get uh, checked for, for these uh, yeah. uh, diseases and these cancers. Late so, diagnosis. Late diagnosis. Can you now both look at yourselves in the mirror yes. and think, I am completely happy with the way I look? Yes, yes, I do personally. Because, I mean, I've been on the on the bandwagon of dieting and putting on more weight and, and dieting and, and going fat, fatter and losing, and, and, and you see, on, on the uh, vicious circle. So now I have to uh, just look at myself and be happy with myself because I want to be happy and healthy. And for my health, I have to be happy. Catherine? Um, yeah, I, I have, I'm confronted with myself quite frequently. I go to the gym an awful lot and I see myself in the mirror and working out and whatever, which is never the most comfortable position but I, I don't think I can say every single day yes I absolutely adore myself but I can certainly say most days I'm okay Catherine Trudeski, Fatima Parker thank you both very much indeed and on Monday Jane will be joined